meaning of subset grid works, different types of subset grid works, and what are the advantages of subset grid works in our part one. This is part two. In this part two, we are going to discuss about individual subset grid works. What are those individual subset grid works we have? We have purchase book, we have purchase returns book, we have sales book. Sales returns book, bills receivable book, bills payable book, cash book, and journal book. These are the eight subsidiary books, different types of you know, subsidiary books we learned in our previous video. Now I am going to talk about email books. Let us talk about purchase book in this video. What, are, what is that you know, we regard in purchase book? That is what we are going to discuss. And we are also going to work out one another illustration in this video. Please remember, when we talk about purchase book, we record goods purchases for credit in purchase book. I am repeating again, repeating again. Goods purchased for credit, underline credit. Goods purchased for credit will be recorded in purchase book. That means goods purchased for cash should not be recorded. And where do we record it? We record it in journal proper, sorry, cash book, with that we will discuss in separate. We should not record assets purchased either for the cash or for the I am repeating again, uh, my dear friends. In purchase book, what are those transactions we are going to record? We are going to record only goods purchased for credit in purchase book. We should not record goods purchased for cash. We should not record assets purchased for cash. We should not record assets purchased for credit. The only one transaction what we write there is goods purchased for credit. That's all. We don't record any other transactions. Are you clear? Now, what we are going to do now is I am going to show you the specimen of the purchase book, how the purchase book specimen is going to be. Right? And we will take one illustration from uh, CI Institute material and we will uh, work upon uh, that illustration. Are you ready? Let us start. Let us go to the system and start looking at it. Right? Okay, guys. We have discussed about purchase book. What are the transactions to be recorded in purchase book? Right? Now, we are going to look at the specimen of the purchase book now. Purchase book has a date column wherein you enter the date. It has a particulars. In this particular column, what generally we write is the supplier name from whom we purchased those goods. Supplier, vendor, creditor, these are all you know the names for you know creditors and suppliers, right? Supplier, vendor, creditor. Those names will be mentioned here from whom we purchased those goods. And the quantity also we can mention. What is the type of product we purchased? How much quantity we purchased? All those things can be mentioned in the particulars column. Then LF number. LF number is nothing but ledger folio number. Once the subsidiary books are done, these transactions have to be posted into the ledger folio. Ledger folio. So we need to mention from here which ledger or which phase of the ledger this transaction has been posted. That is something which we need to mention in this column that is called a ledger folio. Ledger folio number is nothing but in which page of the ledger book we recorded this transaction. That number has to be mentioned here. And what are the details? Details are basically, you know, in case if uh, any uh, uh, calculations has to be done, that, that will be mentioned in details column. And then finally, we mention the amount. Again, repeating. First column we mention about date. Second column we mention about particulars. Particulars are basically supplier name 
product name quantity will be mentioned here ledger folio is nothing but from here which ledger uh, this transaction has been or which page of the ledger this transaction has been posted mentioned here and details basically if there are any calculations uh, you know has to be mentioned that we can mention here in details column and then finally we will put the amount so once again i am repeating in purchase book we record only credit goods purchases credit goods purchases we don't record any other transactions in this book are you clear about the you know purchase book right so once you know the specimen you we can start you know uh, uh, working on uh, the illustrations here you can see i've taken illustration one from ca institute material ca foundation material and we are going to work on this illustration now so as i always you know used to say first we need to read the problem and then we can move on to the uh, solution right let us read the problem what it says here the rough book of measures narain and company contains the following narain company books they have given here what is that they have given here purchased from brown and company on credit they mentioned very clearly they purchased on credit so this transaction is eligible to book in purchase book right this transaction is eligible to record in purchase book because this transaction is purchased for credit number one five gross pencils at 100 rupees per gross guys i'll tell you very important point here <coughs> what do you mean by grass do you know grass is equal to 12 dozens grass is equal to 12 dozens dozen is how much you go to you know market and say i wanted to buy one dozen of you know uh, bananas one dozen of banana is how many how many 12 pieces one dozen of bananas is nothing but 12 pieces of banana right so dozen is equal to 12 pieces one grass is equal to 12 dozens that means 12 into 12 144 pieces is equal to one grass you have to understand this uh, you know simple you know important things one dozen equal to 12 pieces one gross is equal to 12 dozens 12 dozens is equal to 12 into 12 144 pieces are you getting my point so where is this you know grass word came from this grass word has come from old french word this is a old french word this has come from french right so grass is you know uh, the word from french grass means 12 dozens one dozen equal to 12 then i said 12 dozens 12 into 12 equal to 144 pieces here you see five grass pencils they purchased that means what one grass is equal to how much 12 dozens one 144 pieces so you don't require to calculate into pieces and to you know do the multiplication here but you should know what do you mean by grass you will, you will have a good command over the subject, right? If you get to know about what is grass here. So, five grass pencils is nothing but five, 12 dozens of pencils have been purchased at 100 rupees per grass. That means 12 dozens is equal to 100 rupees. That is the meaning of it. Okay, we don't require to get into those details right now. So, simply you can say 5 into 100 is equal to 500. You can multiply. But I just wanted to let you know what is the meaning of grass. Grass is nothing but a word derived from the French grass is equal to 12 dozens, 1 dozen equal to 12, 12 into 12 equal to 144 pieces. This is for your knowledge sake, I am telling you. Clear? Then, one grass register, 240 rupees per dozen. This is what they have given. 240 rupees per dozen they have given. If you don't know, one grass is equal to 12 dozens, how do you answer this question? You tell me it is very difficult right so one grass equal to 12 dozens but one dozen cost is 240 rupees one grass they have purchased that means 240 into 12 once again i am telling you one grass is equal to 12 dozens one grass equal to 12 dozens here 240 rupees per dozen he has given so 
one gross registers they purchased that means what 12 dozens they purchased each dozen at 240 rupees that means what 240 into 12 is equal to 2880 rupees they spent for one gross of register that is how you need to think about it that is the reason good that i explained what is the meaning of grass without even knowing this is what given in the problem now you understood right what is the meaning of grass right let me let me go anyway i'll explain all these things when once we go to the solution but uh, you know you need to understand then they also gave trade discount of 10 percent this trade discount what i was keep on telling from my previous videos trade discount is something will be given to the uh, a person who purchased goods at the time of negotiating or at the time of purchase so that is the reason this trade discount sh should not be accounted as a discount in our books of accounts it should not be accounted as a discount in our books of accounts because generally if you if you get the discount you, you will be showing that as a you know income right am i right or wrong or if you give the discount you will be recording that as a discount in our books of accounts right discount account debit or discount account credit but in case of trade discount you should not discuss or you should not write discount you should not maintain a discount account at all because that discount is already negotiated at the time of preparing invoice itself this discount is already deducted so you should not show this so but but for calculation purpose we need to calculate let us move on to the next one purchased for cash from the station remark here itself gone purchased for cash the minute you see purchased for cash ignore that point because purchase book we record only credit purchases we should not record any cash purchases for cash purchases you have a cash book so there we are going to record it so in this case he said very clearly this is purchased for cash so we should not record this transaction 10 grass exercise books at 300 rupees per dozen this is not required at all because it is purchased for credit next one sorry cash next one purchased a computer for office use from measures uh, an office goods company on a credit for 30,000 he purchased a computer computer is is goods computer is an asset what did i say when i spoke about purchases goods purchased for credit only should be recorded in purchase book assets purchased for credit we should not write assets purchased for cash we should not write goods purchased for cash also we should not write what is that we can write in purchase book we write only goods purchased for credit but in this case what did he say purchased a computer for office use computer purchased for office use is nothing but an asset so assets purchased either for the cash or for the credit should not be recorded in purchase book should not be recorded in purchase book are you clear right let us move on to the next point purchased on credit from the paper company let me take it down a little bit so what did he say here purchased on credit from the paper company five reams of white paper 10 reams of ruled paper less trade discount so five reams of white paper 100 rupees per ream they purchased 10 reams of ruled paper at 150 rupees per ream they purchased so this is a credit transaction so this has to be recorded in purchase book because it is purchased for credit right then next one purchased one dozen gel pens at 15 rupees each from measures verma and company brothers on credit so they purchased dozen one dozen is equal to how much one dozen is equal to 12 pieces so 12 rupees each they purchased sorry 15 rupees each they purchased each pen 15 rupees when i said dozen 12 into 15 correct this is what you need to record so purchased one dozen gel pens at 15 rupees per each from measures you know verma brothers on credit so he is asking us to prepare purchase book with all these transactions what we did so far we read the problem now you know this is the format of purchase book date is there particulars is there details is there lf number is there amount is there this is what the specimen of the purchase book now let us record these transactions one by one 
purchased from brown and company on credit so this is right transaction to be recorded because it is purchased for credit so measures brown and company from here we purchased so we have to put his name measures brown and company what date we purchased february 1st february 1st we purchased date you need to put then what is that we purchased five gross pencils at 100 rupees per gross five gross pencils at 100 rupees per gross so 100 into 5 equal to 500 we mentioned in details column because we add all together and put it there because they have given they, they asked us to reduce the trade discount as well that is the reason let us put those transactions in inner column and then put it in outer column with the net amount okay then next one one gross register at 250 rupees per dozen uh, per dozen one gross register 250 rupees per dozen uh, dozen that is what they mentioned so what what we need to do one gross register means one gross equal to 12 dozens one gross equal to 12 dozens 12 into 240 rupees how much it will come 2880 see they have written 2880 so now what we need to do we need to add these two 500 plus 2880 coming to 3380 rupees in this 3380 they asked us to reduce 10 percent of the trade discount so let us calculate 10 percent of the trade discount 3380 into 10 percent will come to 338 so from 3380 if you reduce 338 you get 3042 so that means in the first transaction we purchased goods worth 3042 that is what we need to record are you clear right next one purchased for cash from the stationary mart this we don't require to look into it at all the reason is purchased for cash this transaction will not be recorded here in this book because it is purchased for cash here what we record we record only goods purchased for credit but this is purchased for cash so we should not write clear next one third one <coughs> Purchase a computer for office use from measures office goods on a credit for 30,000. Computer. Computer is an asset. He purchased a computer for office use purpose. It is an asset. What did I say? What are the transactions we need to record in purchase book? I said purchase book. We have to record only credit purchases. That two goods. Goods purchased for credit only should be recorded here. But this is computer. It is an asset. When the asset is purchased either for the cash or for the credit, that should not come here in purchase book. So, this third transaction also we should not record because it is purchased, per, asset is purchased. Computer is an asset that has been purchased. So, that should not be recorded here in purchase book. Are you clear? Then, purchased on credit from the paper company. This is very clearly mentioned. Credit right so from where we purchased the paper company see here the paper company then when did we purchase february 4th february 4th is given here clear what is that we purchased five reams of white paper at 100 rupees per ream five reams of white paper at 100 rupees per ream five into 100 equal to 500 we need to put that amount in inner column clear then 10 reams of ruled paper at 150 rupees per no ream 10 reams of ruled paper at 150 rupees per ream 10 into 150,500 clear when we multiply you get 1500 then total these two how much it will come 2000 rupees it will come on that they they asked us to reduce 10 percent trade discount so 2000 10 percent trade discount if i calculate it is coming to 200 rupees so 2000 minus 200 equal to 1800 this is how you need to record in purchase book because the net purchases what we purchased is 1800 rupees are you clear so far right next one purchased one dozen gel pens at 15 rupees each from measures verma brothers on credit this is also purchased on a credit so we need to mention mr verma brothers from verma brothers we purchased so better put verma brothers supplier name and one dozen 
they purchased. One dozen equal to how many? 12. 12 pieces. Each piece at what rate they purchased? 15 rupees. 12 into 15 is equal to how much? 180 rupees. That is what mentioned here. That is what mentioned here. So 180. When you total these three, you will get 5022. That is what you mentioned here as total. This is how the purchase book has to be recorded. Are you clear? So there are two important points we understood. How to prepare the purchase book we understood. And we also understood the meaning of grass, where from this grass word has been derived. And one grass is equal to how many you know uh, pieces, that also we understood. And we also understood that credit uh, goods purchases only to be recorded here. All other transactions should not be recorded. So that is what we concluded in this illustration. I am going to take another one or two illustrations from the same institute material. We will finish off those illustrations. If possible, I will try to cover another two or three, whatever is available there. If, if they are small illustrations, I will close them and move on to the sales book. Are you clear so far? Very good. So, if you like the content, as usual, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Right? Thank you.